today we are going to learn about the principles of design and how design principles can help us achieve better design. We're going to be going over different principles and they're going to be incorporated into your designs throughout the semester. So make sure you pay attention because each of these things are equally important. And when they all combine together, you'll have a much more powerful design. Let's take a look at four um, album artworks or like covers of albums so that we can kind of look at the design and see why we like it, why we might not like it, and how principles of design might um, be incorporated into these different uh, graphic designs here. So let's take a first look at this AFI album cover. The album is called Sing the Sorrow. And I want you to look at it and say to yourself, answer these questions. Do you like the design of the cover? If so, why does it appeal to you? Maybe how do the colors interact in this album cover so that they're more appealing? What about the texture of the album and how it's kind of scuffed up? Think about all these things. So answer those questions to yourself. Do you like it? I know for me, it appeals to me. I, I really like the blend of the colors. I like the blend of the texture, of the worn out look. Um, I like the typography that they used. Um, overall, I think it's a good design. Let's look at another one. Here is another album art, this time by the artist Dashboard Confessional, um, the album titled The Shade of Poison Trees. Now, take a look at this one. It's um, a little bit more simple than the AFI one we just looked at. Um, it does have uh, lots of color. What do you think of the balance? Um, what do you think? Does this have less texture? If so, how do you think that the colors Maybe the, the font choices that were used, the lightness of it. How do you think that contributes to the design? What do you think that this design is supposed to make you feel? Like photography, design is supposed to make you feel a certain way when you look at it. The principles of design help us to distinguish our different feelings and they give the viewer uh, the feeling that the designer wants to portray. In this case, what Dashboard Confessional wants to portray to their listeners. So ask yourself the question on this one. Do you like the album design? Not, not do you like the music, because you know that doesn't really matter in this case. But do you like the design? Why or why not? At the end of the lesson today, you might be able to figure out why you like it or why you don't like it in a little bit more concise way. Because right now I bet you're saying to yourself, well, I know I don't like it, or I know I do like it, but I'm not sure why. Let's look at another example. This album cover has quite a different feel than the AFI one and the Dashboard Confessional one that we just looked at. Um, and as you probably know, Jack Johnson's music has a much different feel than maybe AFI or Dashboard Confessional. Um, for those of you who don't know, Jack Johnson is a very uh, mellow acoustic guitar, electric guitar, uh, just very soothing type of music. And check out the colors and the fonts used on this album cover. Are they soothing? Are they saying something about Jack Johnson's music? What about the curviness of the way Jack Johnson is written? Does that kind of give a nice flow to the design? What about this light teal? Does it make you feel relaxed? Look at the design. Overall, do you like it? Do you not like it? Why or why not? Let's look at one last example of album art before we go on to the principles of design. All right, this last album art is Jimmy Eat World's Chase This Light album cover. And as you can see, it's very bold, um, very bright, lots of bright colors, lots of lines on this one that are leading your eye upwards and towards the words Jimmy Eat World. 
So again, ask yourself the questions, what is Jimmy Eat World trying to tell you with this design? Do you like the design? Does it appeal to you as a listener? How are principles of design incorporated into this? Well, I know you're not ready or you don't know the principles of design yet. So let's hop right into them. We'll look at a bunch of examples of things and you'll be able to learn how to incorporate principles of design into your designs to make your designs even better. Did you count how many times I said the word design there? Because I'm sure it was a lot. Okay, let's move on. The first principle of design that you'll want to definitely remember and make note of is called balance. And balance is extremely important in design. What it is, it is arranging pictures, shapes, or text so that they look even and pleasing. So that when you look at something, it isn't really heavy on one side or the other. Or one thing isn't directly calling out to you in such a way that other things on the page aren't being noticed. Let's look at three great examples of balance in good design. Here's an example of how balance is used in this snowboarding magazine. You can see that the page is kind of divided in half here in this section. There's this one section with the picture and one section with the words. But neither side is too heavy and you don't seem to be drawn to one side or the other. Um, you also can tell by where it says hold the free writing at the top where hold is bolded and free writing is bolded but maybe if the had been bolded too it would have just been a little bit too much on that side. So both of these sides of the page kind of balance each other out. Now, just because this is a symmetrical example of balance doesn't mean balance is always symmetrical. Let's take a look at um, something that might be not as symmetrical, meaning uh, the page doesn't just have to be divided into half and there's even things balancing each other out on each side. Let's take a look at something that's not just divided in half. Here's an example of some good balance in page layout as well as on the image. Let's take a look at first the image. Do you see where the words a new home are stacked up on the side there? So within this mountainous image, you've got this white mountain peak kind of poking up behind these pine trees. And the words a new home are layered in a triangle shape so that we've kind of got a mountain over here and then we've kind of got like a triangle mountain of white text over here. So it's very pleasing to the eye those two kind of balance each other out in the image. It's not too dark and heavy um, on the image whereas it might have been had that title not have been there. You can also see the page layout of um, this kind of grayish slate blue text down here. Um, and the picture. So do you see how the picture is about two-thirds bigger than this slate blue one-third bottom half type thing where the text is? So both of them are laid out. One isn't necessarily bigger than the other one. They're balancing each other out on the page so that your eye is very pleased. Nothing feels too heavy on the page. That type of thing. Maybe it wouldn't have had good balance if the text was not white. Maybe if the text was black, it would just be um, a little bit too heavy on the eye. But with the white text, it keeps it really light and flowy and just makes you feel good when you look at it. I know that those are kind of fluffy things to say, but it's really true. The white text really does help. Let's look at another example of balance. The question to ask yourself regarding balance is, how can you use balance to enhance your design and to help the viewer know what you're trying to achieve? So what are you trying to achieve with balance? Look at this snowboarding page here. Do you see how they divided the page layout into these like third sections? Um, our eyes, it's called the golden mean. Our eyes like to see things in thirds. We don't like to see things in halves. Um, so this page, it looks like it's been divided up. It's about two-thirds of the width, and then a third is this column over here. So it provides good balance to our eyes, because as humans, 
it's that golden mean, the golden ratio. Um, we love thirds. So what are you trying to accomplish? You can break the balance rule and throw things off by having a huge amount of stuff over here. Um, and that could be OK for your design if that's what you're going for. In this case, always just ask yourself, how is the balance going to affect my overall design? The next principle that is extremely important for you to recognize in your designs is the principle of color and how color can be used to help the designer portray what the feelings that they're trying to portray. What is color? How light or dark an object is. Color helps us to tell the difference between objects and helps to set the mood of an image. Think back to that Jack Johnson album where there was uh, light teal and that light red that felt so relaxing and that was just like his music. It helps set the mood and the tone of his album, the color on the front. Think back to the color on the Jimmy Eat World album that was that really bright peacock feather. What did that tell us about the Jimmy Eat World album? Let's look at some more examples of how color can be used within your design to help enhance it. Here's an example of how color is used within the snowboarding ad. What kind of feelings do these warm colors give you when you look at the ad? I think that it reminds me of a sunset and um, it kind of gives off a warmth and a really kind of trendy and hip type feeling. It also matches the logo. Um, see how the color makes that snowboarder up at the tops stand out? because he's black and the sky around him is that orangish yellow. So you kind of see him and you kind of follow the color around and down to where the logo of the brand is at the bottom. So maybe if there had been other colors like blues or purples or greens in this, it would have just been very um, lots going on. There would have been a lot going on. Your eye wouldn't be drawn to necessarily one thing. It would have had lots of different splashes of colors. Whereas this, it's kind of simple with the colors. Your eye goes to the snowboarder. It goes, follows the color all the way down to the logo that matches. And that's how the color helps this ad. Let's look at another way color is used in the next ad. Now, here's an interesting ad where there isn't that much color in the ad in the first place. So where does your eye automatically go? That's right to the places where there are color. So there's the blue and the red and the rainbow at the bottom of the snowboard. So your eye goes and sees fresh and tracked. It sees the rainbow on the snowboard and then it sees those headings right there underneath the header at the top. So when you first look at it, the first thing you see are those tiny splashes of color. And even though there's not a ton of color in this ad, like maybe on that Jimmy Eat World album again, but the color is used in this tasteful way so that your eye automatically knows where to go. And it knows that Fresh and Tracked has something to do with that snowboard because the same colors are being used there. And that those headers underneath the title, Fresh and Tracked, probably go with that same article because the same colors are used. So. That's an example of how a little bit of color can be used to really provide a lot of emphasis to the ad and show your viewer where you want their eyes to go. Let's look at one more example of color. This ad also has kind of a lack of color in it. There's not very much color. The only colors I see are whites, grays, and red. That's pretty much it. But since the snowboarder is wearing a red jacket, and the only other red things are really maybe that red ramp at the bottom, the website at the bottom, and the logo at the top. The viewer automatically assumes that if the snowboarder is red, then he must be associated somehow with this red brand there at the top. So because the consistent color red was used in this ad, the viewer then associates whatever the person is doing with the brand. So think about being consistent with colors within your designs 
as well as maybe breaking the rules and being inconsistent and see where that leads you. Breaking the rules is always encouraged um, as long as you can justify it as why you did it and there's a good reason. Let's look at our next principle of design. The next principle of design that's important to remember when you are doing your own graphic design is called emphasis. And what emphasis is, is the main focus of the design. What are you trying to sell in your ad? What are you trying to make your viewer look at? It can be created by a shape or by color or by a size difference that catches attention. So do you remember that um, uh, colorful ad with the blues and the reds, with the snow border, and it was just blue and red? Those colors um, created emphasis. Or when there was just the snow border in the sky, that created emphasis. Where is your eye drawn to first in the ad? Let's look at some examples of how emphasis is used in certain advertisements. Now, if you just start looking at this ad, if you closed your eyes and then opened them, the first thing I see when I look at this is that bright red E logo on this guy's t-shirt. And then I kind of look down, I kind of follow his arm and his leg down because his shoe and his leg look really big. They're using a, a wide angle lens here to make the shoe and his leg look a little bit bigger. So I see the... E, and then I go down and I see his shoes, which um, since I know that the E logo is an Etnies brand and I know that they make shoes, I am to assume that he's wearing Etnies shoes or also maybe Etnies gear like his watch or his head hat thing or whatever. So emphasis here is you see that bright white t-shirt and then the red and then you look around the ad for the other things that you're supposed to see. But what was your eye drawn to first? Let's look at another example. When you look at this advertisement, what does your eye see first? Well, maybe in this case Color is used to give a good emphasis because the only yellow thing on the ad is the thing that says tightboards.com across the top. Then your eye goes around and sees, oh, I think they're having a sale because the word sale is listed many, many times. Um, but everything kind of points to this yellow tightboards.com. It's what your eye is drawn to first. The lines at the top, those white lines in the right-hand corner, point to tightboards.com as well as excuse me the lines of all the sales stuff they're kind of pointing upwards to tightboards.com so this is an example of how color can be used just like that one the etnies red one the red logo on the last ad that was another example of how color was used to provide emphasis within an advertisement the next one we're going to look at in regards to emphasis is uh, size. So how can size be used to provide emphasis? Now here is an image of an ad with extremely uh, blown up uh, ski goggles right here. They're very large and they're the only thing with color on them. Um, the header is pretty large, but I really think the first thing you look at are those ski goggles that are so big and out of proportionately sized, and they've got those funky colors on the front of the glasses. So when you first turn the page in the magazine and you see this ad, you're going to look at those goggles and be like, whoa, those look kind of cool. Then you're going to kind of look around at... Um, oh, that's kind of a cool font, the Kingpin, uh, by Gordini, cool, you know, whatever. And so this is an example of how hierarchy and size can be used to provide emphasis, um, as well as with a little splash of color. All right, so there was three examples of emphasis. Let's move on to our next principle of design. The next principle of design we're going to look at is called line and using lines within your designs to show the viewer um, what you want them to see. The, a line is the connection of two or more points. Lines can also be seen in the arrangement of text and objects. 
So let's look at some examples of how lines can be used to draw your eyes to certain things, to add emphasis, um, yeah, to show your viewer what you want them to see. All right, this ad is basically just a photograph and some text with some lines added. So when you first see the ad, it's very simple. And then you see all these crazy, fun, curly lines connecting to the um, still now, whatever that means on this advertisement. So you see the straight lines of the mountains everywhere, and then you see these curvy lines, which can't possibly be part of nature. And they draw your attention to what the ad is trying to show you. And so the use of the lines point towards what you're trying to look at. Even look at this line here that starts on the mountain, the, the mountain shadow in the bottom left corner, and it points up to still now. Um, and it kind of just draws your eye even further in right there with the way the mountain is photographed. This advertisement uses a lot of different straight lines to draw your eye towards what you're supposed to be looking at, which is this uh, snowboarder here. So you can see all the straight lines of this fence pointing up to her. And you can see even the horizontal lines over on the left-hand side pointing over to her. Um, and so, once again, if your eye doesn't automatically go to the snowboarder, the lines are there to draw you even further into looking at the snowboarder. So it's showing you where to go to see the emphasis and the main point of the advertisement. The next principle of design we're going to look at is called shape. And what shape is, is that it's an object that has both width and height, or height and width is written here, also, the form we see when two or more things are placed together. Now, the shape of things can be interesting because when things have an interesting shape, our eyes are drawn towards them. Um, shape, it can also kind of be the layout of how things are laid out on the page. So let's look at some examples of shape and how interesting shape can draw a viewer's eye into an advertisement. When you first look at this advertisement, you see the silhouette of this buffalo here, and you kind of see some lines pointing down to where you're supposed to look later, and you see the color pop of natural selection, and, and la 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 la. But if you look even closer at the buffalo, look at the shape of his back. Do you see that the shape of it is actually some mountains, and that those curvy lines on the silhouette of the buffalo are actually snowboarding paths all the way down to this quicksilver thing that's going on. So in this case, it's kind of a double thing going on here. You see the shape of the buffalo and you're like, oh, cool, that's kind of interesting. And then you look even closer and you're like, oh, wow, that is a mountain with snowboarding paths on it. So it's kind of this double thing going on. And I believe that the shape of this really enhances the design because it causes the viewer to kind of look back at it twice instead of just turning the page in the magazine and moving on to the next thing. This advertisement is an interesting example of using shape in an ad. If you take a look, the designer has actually grabbed five different images and stuck them into their own uh, warped perspective rectangles here on the ad. And it's pretty simple with just the logo in the bottom right. Um, but if you think about it, most advertisements are stuck on these 8.5 by 11 pieces of paper that are, you know, the size of a page in a magazine. But this ad is kind of created its own plane and its own shapes um, that draw your eye in because it's just an interesting layout that most advertisements don't choose to do. And so I think that the shape of this ad is just really interesting. Um, and I can't really tell you other things about why I like it. I just know that I do like it because of the way the shapes are laid out. The next principle of design we're going to look at is size and how size of an object can be used to show your viewer what you're trying to make them see. 
So the definition of size is an object's largeness or smallness. Also, it's visual lightness or heaviness. Now we've looked at a bunch of advertisements that have some heaviness to them or very light feel. Think back to our album arts that we looked at in the beginning. Remember that Jack Johnson one or the AFI one or the um, Dashboard Confessional Poison Tree one, how it was kind of light or maybe a little bit more heavy. So let's look at some examples of how an object's largeness or smallness can draw your eye in to what you're supposed to see as the viewer. So check out the size of this snowboarding bootstrap in this advertisement and how it's abnormally large and taking up most of the page. It's absolutely the first thing your eye sees just because it's so big. So it gives the emphasis of this is the object we're trying to sell immediately. And then the size of the little words at the bottom or the brand name or whatever, they're small because immediately your eye kind of goes and looks around um, and they're pretty much the only other thing that's on the advertisement. So the size of this um, is interesting because it's just so big and takes up the whole advertisement. Let's look at another element of size. In this advertisement, it's a little bit of the opposite as the last one you saw, where the object was so big that it took up the whole part of the screen. Well, on this, the emphasis is on the snowboarder in his orange pants, but look how big he is in comparison to the advertisement. He's pretty small, and uh, the advertisement is pretty big. So do you see how emphasis can be used like that just splash of orange um, but the size is really small in comparison to emphasis on something really big. So an object's largeness or smallness can serve to give emphasis, and you just have to draw attention to it. The next principle of design we're going to go over is called rhythm. And rhythm is the movement that we, quote, see in art. Now, movement can be, um, uh, it's just how you see movement, uh, it's hard to explain. Let's look at some examples and you can see the movement in these different advertisements and designs and see how you could maybe incorporate uh, rhythm into your designs. So here we have a nice example of rhythm and movement in design. You can kind of see that this image goes from left to right, and you can see that the boot is kind of clicking itself into place in the advertisement. You can tell that there's movement there because it's kind of a series of images that follow the movement. Now, how does movement enhance the image? Well, you can kind of tell that um, the different images kind of show it snapping into place. It leads your eye to the object that your um, advertiser is trying to make you see. And overall, it's just an interesting image to look at. When things are interesting and they're not normally what we see, viewers might tend to stop on them in magazines before other advertisements. Let's look at more examples of rhythm so you can kind of get the different examples of movement in your head of how you can use it in your designs. Repetition is one way that um, rhythm can, you can see the movement of rhythm in the piece. So in the last piece, you had the kind of repetition of the boot strapping into itself there, moving from left to right. And this we've got kind of a repetition of colors, designs and skulls kind of moving all across the piece and it gives it an interesting form of movement. The next principle of design that we're going to look at is texture. And what texture is, is how a piece of art feels to us, whether it be actual tangible touch or the way it makes us feel inside when we look at it. We're going to look at some examples of texture and how when you look at the piece of art, it just has a feeling that it gives us um, in regards to its texture. I know that doesn't make a lot of sense, so let's look at the examples so we can be a little bit more clear about what texture actually is. When you first look at this advertisement, how does it make you feel? 
the feeling of um, old-fashioned, country, vintage, that kind of thing, that's how the texture is affecting the mood of the piece. So you can kind of see um, how the texture would feel, this uh, wood grain back here. You can kind of picture feeling that in your mind. And then when you think of wood grain, what kind of mood does wood grain portray into you? What kind of feelings does that give you? That's the texture of the piece affecting you. Think back to the AFI album cover that was all wrinkled and crackly and old. How did the texture of that piece, or how it might actually feel, affect the mood of the design? Here's another type of advertisement that's a good example of texture. Now remember, the definition of texture is how a piece of art feels whether it be an actual touch or the way we feel inside. So if you think about actually touching this ad, you'll see that it's full of layers. You can kind of um, feel like the zigzag stitching under your fingertips. There's a sticker on it. It just has a very scrapbooky feel. Now, how does this, how does the way that it might be to our, the touch of our hand affect the way we feel inside about it? Well, since, like I said before, it gives it that sort of scrapbooky feel with the layers and um, the different pieces coming together to form something, um, gives it a, a more bulletin board casual feel. So all of that contributes to the mood of the design, and the texture is a huge contributor to that. The last of our principles of design is called unity. And we've seen a lot of unity in the ads we've looked at before in regards to color and line, that type of thing. But we'll go over it again this time. Unity is a similar quality that brings together the different things in a design. Here's a great example of unity in regards to color. Because the only colors on the page are these oranges and yellows. And the oranges and yellows are the same colors in the logo and this design down here as on the snowboarder. And so you automatically in your mind assume, oh, snowboarder equals this logo. This brand must be about snowboarding or something about it or it gives the snowboarding feel. So there's lots of different ways to have unity that's not just color. Let's look at another example. This ad has a few different unifying things going on. Um, firstly, the green color of the sweatshirt, the logo, and the other logo in the bottom left corner. But also, look at kind of how things are layered around each other. Um, planet Earth at the bottom, and then the picture on the right, and the picture on the left. They're all kind of layered, and that's unifying, as well as the drop shadow behind each of them, and the, also the drop shadow behind the logo in the bottom left corner that's unifying. Um, the different lines that are everywhere on the staircase or the drawn lines on the side and the drawn lines on this t-shirt or on this long sleeve t-shirt that he's wearing here, that's unifying as well. So it doesn't just have to be color, but the advertisement sometimes is better if it's cohesive and things are all coming together in a unifying way. So as you look at this album art, what principles of design do you see in it that you didn't see before you learned about them? Let's go over the different principles that you learned about today in this presentation. How does the balance of the words affect the design? What about the different colors that are used? Is anything emphasized in this design or using certain emphasis? Is there a place where your eye is supposed to go? What about the use of the lines in the words in rainbows, etc., etc.? You can kind of look at the different shapes, the size of it, um, the rhythm and the texture of this as well. It's hard to incorporate every single principle of design well. So how do the principles of design affect the design of this album art? Um, I would say that one strength of this album of the Veronica's is the texture of the crinkled paper in the background. You can kind of 
almost feel it with your hand and then it gives you that certain feel of um, uh, you know crinkled old vintage again um, and as well as these checkerboard um, faded out on the side here um, it gives you the feeling of an old-fashioned school note, especially with the um, lipstick kisses on the front. The use of color is important, too, because your eye is immediately drawn to that bright splash of red right in the center, which draws emphasis to the name of the band, the Veronicas. And so the mood and feel that the principles of design are giving off on this album art probably reflect the type of music that the Veronicas actually do. So throughout these slides, I know it's been a long slideshow, but we've learned about lots of different principles of design. And as you incorporate them into your own designs, you'll be able to affect and manipulate your viewer into feeling the way you want them to feel. And so by using balance, color, emphasis, line, shape, size, rhythm, texture, and unity, you will be able to become a stronger designer as opposed to just slapping stuff on a page for no apparent reason. You can try and incorporate color or lines or shapes or things to draw your viewer's eye into the advertisement or the logo or whatever you're designing. So make sure you have all of these um, principles of design committed to your memory and uh, you know what each of them are because throughout the semester we will be going over them time and time again analyzing different designs based on these principles and it's important that you have a firm knowledge of them.